so glad you're here in the midst of a record storm. Um, remember, if the power goes out, you can use the hymnals to find the words to sing along. Hopefully that won't happen. It's picking up out there, but the actual I isn't said to pass San Diego until 3 o'clock today. So, we are so glad you are here. Apologies in advance to our Zoomers who we've already been having technical difficulties. So, hang in there and hopefully whatever we did will make it work. But we are so glad that you are also here with us on Zoom. And of course, if anything goes on where you're at, um, we're recording it and hopefully it stays that way. But we're so glad you're here with us this morning. Um, our big celebration is next weekend and Woo! there's no storm expected. Woohoo! Yeah. Yes! <laughs> Just so happy about that. We do, though, still need a few more volunteers to make sure everything goes smoothly. There is a clipboard in Bailey Hall if you would like to sign up. Um, and I think in our Friday email, Pastor Rebecca shared a couple of the spots where we really need a couple people to fill in for, um, I think it's two different slots, 11 to one and then one to three. It would be great if you could help and just connect with people who are here celebrating with us. Um, oh, she does have it here. Um, we need people for the art project, um, either first shift with Eileen or the second shift with Jennifer. Can two I just say? People. To hang out with. You hear art project and it sounds scary, but it's not scary. I promise. That's Artistic all. skills not required. I think just a friendly demeanor is all that is needed. And I see so many friendly faces here. So, and then Mary Jane will need a partner at the popcorn machine for the first shift from 11 to 1. And then we can use as many people for setup at 10 a.m. as well as clean up afterwards. So again, there's a sign up sheet in Bailey Hall or see Pastor Rebecca if you have any questions about what's going on. But um, you will have a buddy at each station. And again, no special um, no special talents needed, just your willingness to help. So we'd love to have you help. All right, continuing on next weekend, we need to borrow three more pop-up canopies for Saturday. So if you do have one that you would um, allow us to borrow and would like to bring, please let Pastor Rebecca know. Also, if you have a large cooler, uh, we can borrow, and you didn't bring it today, but could bring it next Saturday. Um, no, oh, no, Thursday. Bring it to church by Thursday. We will collect them in room four. So if you have a large cooler, um, please bring it by Thursday. Let Pastor Rebecca know that you have that and that you'll be bringing that um, to borrow. Okay. Uh, question. Yeah. How large is large. Like the just the big kind. Okay. Like the big rectangular. The big, but you can kind. still put your arms around it as opposed to okay, a little you. one. Okay. Yeah, we just have a lot of ice to transport, so I want to keep it cold. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then again, Saturday is a big day of celebration, but so is next Sunday. We are so excited to have our guest preacher, um, who is going to be Rick Lowry. And then afterwards, after worship, we're going to be taking a big group picture out by the mural. So I'm making a video um, for us to use at the regional gathering in October. We're going to say hi to everyone there. They requested um, we make a video for that. So it's a perfect time to do that. So make sure to wear your BLM gear on Sunday or a camp shirt, whatever that means to you. But if you have some gear, please wear it. It'll be really cool for the picture and the video. All right. Novels Tea will meet on Zoom today at 3 p.m. Um, as long as Pastor Rebecca still has power and other people still have power by that point. Um, we do have some birthdays and anniversaries this week. On Tuesday, it is Glenda Cliff's birthday. How old is Glenda turn? 97. 97. Ooh. Is Glenda on Zoom with us this morning or no? There's quite a lot of people on Zoom. You can talk to her later. Uh, I don't think so. That is okay. But if we sing to her, we can show her the Zoom video. She will love yes. that. All right. And then on Friday is Paul Epler's birthday. Oh. Um, so send a text or a note or card over to both of them this week. Is there anybody else we missed? Any other birthdays or anniversaries? Well, I think we have a song to sing. We'll sing it and then you can show it to Glenda yes. later. Yeah. We'll do that. How about that? All right, mm -hmm. let's sing a song. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. May God to reconcile ourselves one to another. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Please stand as you are 
heart, Abel and body or soul, and singing our gathering song, All Are Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. 
song in my childhood, yeah. which is a weird oversight, but uh, I do now, so hallelujah. So let's see, I'm fairly certain, is anybody feeling especially young this morning? Yeah. Or young guest? Good morning, Tessa. Good morning. <laughs> I love you, Tessa. All right, who do we have on Zoom this morning? Pastor Tessa. We have Kathy. Kathy. Betty. Betty. And probably Bill. Maybe Bill. Mary Jane. Mary Jane. Larry. Larry. Cheryl. Cheryl. Mary Ellen. Uh, Jenny. Jenny. And Amber. And Amber. All right. Fantastic. Good morning, Zoomers. Good morning. I heard them. Yes. God uh, loves you, Zoomers. And we hope that the internet and the electricity will all cooperate and you can stay with us the whole time. So uh, just a few prayer concerns uh, as we move now into a time of prayer. And then if you have other things to share, you can. We are continuing to pray for Brenda Rory Beatty um, on the advice of her nurse practitioner. She went into ER on Thursday and they admitted her. Um, she had a CT scan, she's had an EKG, she's had blood work. They're trying to figure out why she is so weak. Um, she's actually also met with a dietitian. They're very concerned at how much weight she has lost in the last few months. Um, so putting her on a special diet to help her, that I will just see. So uh, as far as I know, she is still at Chart Chula Vista. I asked her yesterday if anyone had shared their emergency plan and she said no. So I hope they have one um, and I'm sure they do. But uh, continued prayers for Brenda. I'm not sure when she will get out of the hospital, um, but I'm assuming she may end up going back to rehab for a while. So continue prayers for Brenda. God in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Couple prayer requests from Claudette Toland, uh, traveling mercies for both her husband, Mike, who is hiking in the Sierras, and her in-laws who are hiking in the Alps. Uh, so traveling mercies for them. God in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Also prayers for Claudette's friend, Vicki, who's been struggling with kidney issues and is hoping to be able to avoid dialysis, but is yeah. struggling to get that under control. God, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayers. And of course, we are praying today for all of us uh, impacted by this hurricane slash tropical storm slash rain named Hillary. Uh, and especially, of course, today we are praying for those who are living without shelter, um, who may not be able to find shelter, who may have things destroyed in the rain. Uh, praying for those who live alone, who may be isolated and not know how to find help. Uh, so we know that there are many, many vulnerable populations in a storm like this where we don't necessarily have a lot of experience with, with what to do. So I will just say special prayer for all the people I saw on my way to church today who didn't have their headlights on. I'm going to have to take a moment of silence. Okay. If you need help, if you need help, do not hesitate to reach out to me, to someone in the church. Um, we have some very brave and strong people who can hopefully help you or connect you to someone who can. So prayers for all of this. God in your mercy. Hear our, hear our prayers. We pray each week for our ministry partners. Our global, global ministries prayer partner this week is Syria, where our mission partner is the Forum for Development, Culture, and Dialogue. Our Pacific Southwest Regional Prayer Partner this week is Ramona Avenue Christian Church in Laverne, where Timothy Murphy serves as the pastor. So we pray for these and all of our partners in ministry. God, in your mercy. What else can we lift up together? Do we have anything on Zoom? Yes, we do. We do. Um, Kathy would like traveling mercies for her parents who are visiting the UK. God, in your mercy. And Cheryl would like special prayer for those in Baja, Mexico, who will uh, be experiencing the storm first um, today. So God, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Uh, Betty would like prayer, uh, traveling mercies and coverage for family members that are traveling south for Pam service next weekend. Uh, God, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. And continued prayers for Cheryl, who currently has a very low immune system. Mm -hmm. um, God, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. That is all right now. All right, all right. And I will just lift up again um, the, the memorial service for Pam's daughter, uh, 
I'm sorry, Betty's daughter, Pam, <laughs> is next week, next Saturday in Oceanside. And also the service for Philip Hinshaw is this coming Saturday. Uh, so just keep all of, all of those impacted by those losses in our prayers. God, in your mercy. Your Eileen? Um, we had invited, my son had invited Alden, <laughs> who's a drummer and singer, to be play for our party. He went in to have stints put in. They says, nope, you've got too much blockage. He has a triple bypass. Oh my God. So he can't play for us and sing. But we have another drummer, but he doesn't sing. But anyone that wants to sing with the group and knows the songs when they start playing are welcome to sing. They'd love to have people oh. sing. Oh, it's open mic now. Okay. All right. and, and so it's Alden. 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 So we uh, we lift up Alden, the, the drummer singer, in our prayers for recovery from the triple bypass he had this week. God, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Do you want to tell us about Lori, Tracy? Oh, yeah. um, thank you for your uh, prayers. My friend um, came through her quadruple bypass with flying colors. She's doing great and should be going home in the next few days. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. So we give thanks for recovery from uh, heart surgery for Tracy's friend, Lori. God, with joyful hearts. We give you we give thanks. thanks. All right. He's right there. Ray? Uh, Rebecca, I just uh, was listening and you already mentioned people out on the street. The unfortunate fact is here in San Diego, and forgive me if my numbers are not exactly right, but I think I heard it was like eight people got off the street, got into housing, and 11 came out onto the street. It's something like that. Yes. We ain't making progress yes. is the bottom yes. line. We are taking more water than we get. That yeah. We can't bail and, fast and, enough. Yes. As you said, you know, it's pretty terrible. Yeah. Um, and Besides that, I just heard rents went up 10%. You're telling me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so let us pray on so many levels at once. We know that our God can hold all of this. We pray for the giant mess that is the housing crisis in California and in San Diego County. And we pray for our neighbors living without shelter. We pray for all those who are working to offer shelter and protection. There, there are multiple places that did open up more beds uh, over this weekend and are not kicking people out at 5 and 6 a.m., but letting them stay through the day today and tomorrow. Um, but we know that it is not enough. It is not enough. Only about, I think I saw this morning, 192 additional beds uh for who knows how many people that need them and of course those beds you know how many of you want to sleep in a top bunk tonight not everybody in this room i will tell you right so sometimes that is all that is available and it simply doesn't work for some folks so prayers for all of that uh for we know that god holds it all and weeps alongside us god in your mercy hear our prayers, prayers. Let us continue in prayer. Holy and gracious God, we do come to you today with hearts that are so full. We have already seen not quite as much rain as we anticipated, and for that we give you thanks. We have already seen not quite as much wind as we anticipated, and for that we give you thanks, and we pray, O oh God, that you will continue to soften this storm that you will be there to provide protection in so many different ways for your people, for your creation. Oh God, we confess that we have not been good stewards. And so we ask your forgiveness, oh God, for all the ways in which we have lived callously and indifferently to our impact on your creation and on one another. And we ask, O oh God, that you would bring us together as your people, as your creation. We give you thanks, O oh God, for you have shown us a better way. You have shown us what it means to welcome all, to 
dignify and honor all. We ask, oh God, that you would fill our hearts with your surpassing compassion, oh God, that indeed we might be your church. We ask your blessing on this congregation, oh God, as we strive to be the church you have called us to be, the church that we say we are. We ask, oh God, that you would touch us and guide us and lead us and inspire us. We pray this day for those you're preparing even now to join with us in this community. Help us to help them find their way here. Show us the moments to speak up, to reach out, to invite and welcome. We pray this day for all those who need your healing power. Oh God, those who need your hope in the face of despair, those who need your help in the face of ends that will not meet. We ask your blessing for our children and our teachers as school starts back up. We pray this day for all those working with children, for those working with the elderly and those who are living without shelter. We pray, oh God, for our healthcare workers, especially in this dangerous weekend. We pray, oh God, your blessing on our communities. We pray that your wisdom and your humility and understanding might be in the hearts of our leaders and all of us who have the capacity to improve the lives of others. We pray, O oh God, for the healing of the nations. We pray for those living in the midst of violence and war zones, for people in Ukraine and Niger and <coughs> Yemen and so many places, O oh God, where violence has overtaken living in harmony. We pray, O oh God, for the healing of creation itself, for we pray it all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Bless you. <coughs> Our first reading today is from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 56, verses 3, 3 through 8. It begins on page 686 in the Old Testament section of the Red Bibles in the chair racks, if you would like to follow along. Do not let the foreigner join to the Lord say, the Lord will surely separate us from his people. And do not let the eunuch say, I am just a dry tree. For thus says the Lord, to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths, who choose the things that please me and hold fast my covenant, I will give in my house and within my walls a monument and a name better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it and hold fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcast of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. May the Holy Spirit add blessing to this reading from the prophet. Before I read our second reading, just two things. I do want to say a word of thanks to those of you who are smart enough and faithful enough to have remembered it was food drive sunday even though i completely forgot to put it in the friday email so thank you food drive donors uh, so then also our first reading you just heard uh, this is not the lectionary we're not using the lectionary today next sunday we're going to have a hebrew bible professor preaching his email address is Isaiah 56. So I'm not sure me picking that scripture out today was a very good idea, and I'm kind of hoping you just won't tell him about it, okay? Can we? I want to see some nods. Yes, yes, okay. 
Rick Lowry really loves Isaiah 56. Apparently, he did not choose to preach on it next weekend, for which I give thanks, because I wanted to. So, uh, we will see. He, he, yeah, okay. I just can't even describe it to you until you see it happen. So, our second reading today is from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 14, verse 1, and then verses 7 through 14. You can find it on page 77 in the New Testament section. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the place of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all who humble themselves will be exalted. He also said to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, or you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. May the Holy Spirit add blessing to this reading from the gospel. Will you pray with me and for me as we move into the word together? Holy God, bless the speaking and the hearing of these words that our hearts might be filled to overflowing with your compassion and generosity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have done a lot of celebrating this year. I've seen a number of other churches having anniversaries in 2023, and it seems that most of them have been making a one or two days at most occasion of it. Here at BLM, we're partying all year long. <laughs> I think we've done a pretty good job of keeping the level of celebration just under our maximum capacity for throwing parties. We might need to check with Jennifer on that one. It's been a delicate balance. But anniversaries aren't just occasions for festivities. They are also an invitation to reflection and assessment. So we've also spent some time in conversation about who we are as a congregation and how God is calling us to be church in 2023 and beyond. The elders, the board, all the folks who were gathered at the park in May, various discussions have been held and they generally pointed in similar directions. There's a new portion on our website that aims to sum a lot of that up. At BLM, it says, you'll find a community that, implied dot, 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 in the graphics, shares an informal inclusive worship, opens Christ's table to all, offers progressive biblical preaching, encourages thoughtful questions about faith, serves our neighbors with love, promotes social justice, extends sincere care and hospitality, spans the generations, and welcomes you just as you are. Each of those descriptions links to another place on our website with more information about related aspects of our ministry. Now that I'm saying it out loud, I'm wondering why it doesn't include anything about how much we like to party. <laughs> but maybe it's better to let people discover that when we get here so they take us seriously. 
I'm bringing all of this up because I realized that we are about to have an occasion when our celebrating and our reflecting are going to come together in one big, beautiful living out of what it means to be church. I really hope you're going to be here next weekend. Praise God that it will only be hot, but no tropical storms in the forecast. But seriously, our 75th anniversary is both an opportunity for us to consider deeply and prayerfully and scripturally what it means to be the church of Jesus and a chance for us to experience that happening and share the experience with others. The party we are having next Saturday, I am hoping and praying, will be the kind of party Jesus asks us to host. We've invited our partner churches, our fellow San Diego disciples, congregations, Iglesia de Dios, AKA the Upstairs Church, and other churches here in La Mesa that we work with. We've invited folks from Interfaith Shelter, the East County Homeless Task Force. We've invited all the people who use our building during the week, Gamblers Anonymous, Alcoholics Anonymous, Toastmasters, Franciscan Peace Connection. And of course, We've invited our friends, guests, and student volunteers from Welcome Saturday. It's going to be a wild party. <laughs> Jesus is definitely coming. But more than just a party, it's going to be a four-hour experience of what church really is. I hope you will be here. My house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples, writes Isaiah. After giving specific examples of the people who might be considered uninvited and assuring us they will be guests of honor. Don't invite the people who can invite you back, says Jesus. Engage in hospitality for hospitality's sake. Be generous for generosity's sake, love for love's sake. This is how we bring the kingdom of God near. This is how God's will is done on earth as it is in heaven. What may not be obvious as we're engaged in the struggle against the forces of oppression and hatred, laboring to make sure everyone really is included and welcomed and honored, what may not be obvious is that this work at its core is a celebration. There's singing and possibly even dancing. I got an invitation from a guy at AA Wednesday night. There is bread to be broken, and in this particular case, tacos. There is care taken to make sure every guest is received as an honored guest, with no one made to feel embarrassed or less than. And when I say guest, that includes you. Our anniversary theme celebrating 75 years of sharing Christ's welcome speaks to our desire to share hospitality here in this place, the core of our congregational mission. But it pushes us beyond that, too, to recognize the hospitality that each of us receives in this place as well. It is Christ Jesus who offers the true welcome. And we all share in it together as guests at the feast table of God. Sharing Christ's welcome isn't just something we do to people outside our walls. It's something we do for one another as well. When we gather to celebrate that, we are giving thanks for the welcome we have all received. I hope that you will be here whether just for a bit or a few hours on Saturday or just on Sunday when Rick Lowry will preach for us, I hope you won't miss it. You should probably be careful about what you wear 
on your feet on Sunday because Rick will be knocking socks off right and left. <laughs> 75th anniversary is a really important moment to remind ourselves why we're here and what we're doing. Next weekend will remind us that here is so much bigger than this room. It will remind us that what we're doing here extends far beyond what most of us see on a regular basis. We've asked you to wear your BLM shirts and hats on Sunday because we're planning to take a big photo after worship, but you might want to wear them on Saturday too so folks will know you're part of the congregation. If you can do laundry later that day, go for it. Because I guarantee you, if you have a BLM shirt on while you're here on Saturday, somebody is going to come up to you and express their thanks for the hospitality we offer the group they're part of. They're going to tell you how much it means to be able to gather here knowing they are truly welcome. I know this. Because that's what happens to me almost every time I walk through a meeting as they're getting started. That's what we hear every second Saturday as we wait on the egg casserole to come out of the oven. I hope you will be here next weekend to see and hear it for yourself. My house shall be called a house of hospitality for all peoples, a place of welcome and abundant love for those who never imagined they could be honored guests. May it be so. Hallelujah and amen. amen. <clears throat> Our hymn of response this morning is number 493, Somos Uno. It is at this time that we invite forward anyone who wishes to join with this congregation by confession of faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior or by transfer of membership from another congregation. It is at this time that we are all invited to rededicate our hearts and our lives to the ministry of Jesus Christ. Will you stand with me as you are able and sing? <laughs> who came and they were talking to everyone, getting the feel for how everything's going. And I was eavesdropping on a conversation and they were like, oh, why do you come here? Why is this, you know, how many hours do you have left? And they were like, I finished all my hours last year. 
and they're a junior this year. They're like, I'm done with my hours, and I just come because I like coming here. And that is the truth for the majority of our high schoolers that come to Welcome Saturday. They are already done with their hours. They come because they think that this is a ministry that is important, a place that they can volunteer, and they make an impact. We love talking to our guests. And again, they're done with their hours. They don't need to come at 7.30 on a Saturday, right? But they're here because it matters to them. It's those little ministries, it's those little things that make a huge impact on people that some of us may never meet. I don't know these high schoolers very well, but over time I have, and I've gotten the pleasure to hear about what matters to them or what's important to them. It's the little things of supporting your pastors to be able to go to general assembly and getting to meet people and be fulfilled and renewed and restored in ways that I didn't know were needed. Even when, as you recall, if you recall two weeks ago, I shared staying in the Atlanta airport for 12 hours and meeting this woman who spoke a different language who I'd never met before, willing to share the snacks that she grabbed, willing to let me go to the restroom, willing to grab me a blanket, right? I didn't know that woman. I'd never met her before. But that trip, even though I stayed in the airport, I got to be treated by hospitality by a complete stranger. Your money and your time makes things like that possible makes those moments of connection, like our high schoolers get to get. It, it's so fun to hear them talk about, oh, I saw you at school, or we have this class together, or yeah, I'm telling more people to see if they wanna come on another Saturday or Friday night. It's so beautiful to experience those moments of hospitality and generosity in the most random places at times. So I ask that you give as much as you can of your money, of your time, and your talents. So that those moments of, of generosity, of God coming into this world in breaking of Jesus' spirits, of the Holy Spirit's guidance can happen in here in San Diego and maybe in an airport in Atlanta. Lord Deacons, please receive offerings. <laughs>
Put together as a community of love and care, what we offer you here in love becomes more. <clears throat> Not just by adding it together, but somehow in how we multiply it in its usefulness. We ask that you bless these gifts, and with the addition of your blessing, they will be multiplied to enough for all. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Raise your hand if you've been at a grocery store in the last 48 hours. It was a little crazy, wasn't it? <laughs> I didn't actually do that. I made my husband do that, so <laughs> lucky me. Uh, mm. Fear of scarcity <clears throat> is a thing. It is not a holy thing. One of the reasons we come to this table every Sunday is that it's an unholy, powerful thing, that fear of scarcity. And we come back to this table every single Sunday to gird our spirits to fight back the fear of scarcity. That is not how God asks us <coughs> To live. That is not how Jesus shows us to live. It is not how we have to live when we live life in the communion of the Holy Spirit. We come to this table. It's just a very small piece of bread, really. It could, in fact, be split among us should we live in a germ-free world again someday, maybe, who can say? But it's big enough. It is a gracious plenty. It is the abundance of God. Because it's not our bellies only, but our souls that God aims to feed. We come to this table to be reminded of the abundance of God's love. To be reminded that abundance is good for mostly one thing, and that is sharing. And so we come to this table, not just in this room, not just in the rooms of those on Zoom, but with people all around the world, with people who were fed last Saturday, with people who will be fed this coming Saturday, we come to this table with the entire beloved community of God's people. And there is abundance. But we remember that Jesus gathered with his disciples and he took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he gave it to them saying, this bread is my body broken for you. Eat of it, all of you. And remember me. And in a similar way, he took up the cup. Having given thanks, he poured it out for them, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it, all of you. And remember me. And so we come to the table where brokenness makes us whole. We come to the table where abundance is for all. We come to the table because Christ invites us. Let us pray. Oh Lord God, we give you thanks that you have been the creator all along of a very large table that it even includes us for this we give you thanks that it includes our enemies for this we give you thanks that it includes peace your peace for the whole world for this we give you thanks so, O oh God, we come to this moment 
asking you to bless to your mission this good food that your mission here on earth might be nourished in us and in all your people for the sake of your impending creation we pray this prayer in Jesus holy name Amen and now O oh God hear our hearts each one as we say the prayer that your son taught us our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever. Let us prepare our hearts to come to the table by singing our communion hymn number 408.
Amen and amen. Will you stand as you are in the mood and join in our hymn of going forth, number 494, verses 1 to 3. Let us go in peace.